this partnership is key and it's such a benefit to our athletes and to our team as medical as well because we're able to bring our athletes into really the elite group of medical providers and provide the best service and get their questions answered and sometimes they've been misdiagnosed for a long time and just get things taken care of at the highest level and get them back to sport. These athletes want to be better yesterday and so this just really helps us streamline the whole process. We have really good communication with this team and so we they have good trust of us and us of them and so we're able to really do well with rehabs as well and get the athletes back even better oftentimes than they were before. So I talked about the Paralympic athlete and I've had the opportunity to be the medical director for the last two uh, winter Paralympic Games in Sochi and just recently in Pyeongchang and uh, I've kind of taken on a new role at the USOC as really the liaison on the sports medicine side with Paralympics. They've uh, kind of underutilized uh, sports medicine and the services that are available to them for a long time and so just being able to be there and educate them and be a little bit of an advocate for the population and help uh, help them with their performance as well so that's kind of my new role and I was just in my talk really uh, trying to point out uh, how similar but how different and the complexities they bring and that we have to be aware of those but that sometimes uh, we don't need to overlook that they're an athlete as well and that they bring some of the same the same desires and amazing performances that the able-bodied population brings as well. I think the comorbidities of their various disabilities makes it, a, makes it difficult in some instances. There's just a lot more complexity. It's just with moving the group sometimes, you know, making sure we have uh, vehicles that have lifts and things like that that sometimes a lot of countries aren't very uh, accessible. And so just as a basic step, you know, doing that, but then working on their, uh, on the athletes with a variety of disabilities uh, can sometimes make it more complex and just, uh, we have to kind of take a step back and see, does it apply or doesn't it? And then uh, just working, a lot of them have new injuries, a lot of them have overlaying mental illnesses or things like that from the trauma of their injuries and illnesses and so there's just a lot more complexities or layers that we have to be aware of and work through with this population to have kind of the same success uh, with, that we would have without those. I am just truly inspired. I mean, I'm inspired by the athletes in general, but this population really has, have amazing stories and what they've overcome just in their life, but regardless of the sport that they're in, but just, uh, just their amazing uh, drive to perform and to be an example to all the other uh, individuals out there who may have disabilities or injuries and that they can do something. They don't have to just sit at home and, and kind of wallow in the, the life they've been given, but they can do amazing things and really be inspirational. And so for me, that's just uh, really changed my outlook on life. And, and also I think it helps some of the other athletes. You know, our hangnail is probably not such a big deal as, as we think, you know, life, we're all dealt different things and challenges in our life, but uh, they really show how they can overcome that um, with a smile usually. <laughs> yeah, I think just being aware, uh, and like I said, I think the Paralympic population maybe isn't as apt to seek out medical care. I think either they had a lot of medical care with their injury and they're kind of done with it, uh, or they don't realize that there's benefits to it. And so I think in the communities that we work, we can just be aware of that, whether that's being participating with organizations that have uh, athletes with disabilities or just being able to communicate with that, just being aware of the, the complexities that they bring, and uh, but also being aware that they they have a body too and that they have kind of the same things, but they may just need a little bit more education or a little bit more uh, information around that. We had an athlete with uh, that uh, dwar has dwarfism and so just things like finding crutches that fit her. Just some of those things that sometimes we don't think about and maybe we don't have that in our supply closet and maybe we should because then we're more inclusive of those athletes that uh, could potentially come through our doors. Yeah, I think just the opportunity I had to talk about this and that we're talking about it more across the board, just inclusion on a lot of different levels, but in, in this instance with the Paralympic athlete, I think is key. Uh, I think it's just something that if you don't see it all the time, you probably don't think about it. And so kind of out of sight, out of mind, but I think we 
uh, that's one of my initiatives is to really improve that uh, awareness and both with the athletes themselves as well as with our, our medical population and so I think just having the opportunity to bring that a little bit more to the forefront so the that the attendees and the rest of us can just be aware that this is a population it's growing they're getting more and more competitive and it's just uh, and even if it's not the elite level we have athletes or individuals all around us with disabilities and just being aware that um, they need help too and we can provide that service to them as well.